Today's case actually ends with what the media is calling a narcissist. The worst possible thing that could ever happen happens. There's no excuse. You can't be doing this. You must be punished for killing somebody. You guys know, I use that term on my channel quite a bit. It's because I scout out videos that I believe to have narcissistic behavior and then I try to break it down for you. But I was shocked to see the media calling this suspect, it's hard for me to even call them a suspect because it was caught on camera. They're calling her a narcissist, but let me explain what happened. Samantha Hutchinson and her new husband, Eric Hutchinson, they had just gotten married. Samantha is 34 years old and I, I believe this is her first marriage. That really like strikes something in me because I'm 31 and I'm in a relationship now and I'm very, very, very happy. And you know, maybe we'll get married at 32, 33, 34, but my God, I had fought through life through many relationships to find the person that I wanted to finally settle down with, you know? Samantha, she, she ain't find love right away and jump right into it. She really worked at this relationship and settled down and she and Eric decided to get married and they did. On the day of their wedding, they exchange vows, they have a huge party, it's all very exciting and they go off to spend their first night together as husband and wife. Two people from Eric's family were driving a golf cart for them. It was called an LSV. In South Carolina, it's like an upgraded golf cart that has like lights, seat belts. It's got a little more bells and whistle to it, but it still has the same safety as a regular golf cart. Eric's family hopped in the car. There were two guys in the front. Samantha and Eric were in the back and they pulled off right after the party, after exchanging vows. And moments after they pulled out, a woman named Jamie Lee Komorowski comes peeling out in a 25 mile per hour zone, drunk, going 65 miles per hour, interstate speeds, in a car, and she slams into the golf cart. Eric and his two siblings were in serious condition. According to the GoFundMe that his mother posted this week, the crash was so devastating that Eric had a brain injury, several broken bones, his face was severely bruised, he was to undergo multiple reconstructive surgeries, and while in the hospital, he learned that his wife that he had only married hours ago prior had been killed in the crash. You know, it's hard to find the one that you want to settle down with. And I just, I am, I'm devastated. I just can't imagine what they're going through. Like in, in terms of like, why the f would this happen? Like, what is this? It is truly, truly devastating. So the driver of the car, this big steaming piece of shit, Jamie Kormorowski, she gets detained immediately. It's on the security footage. She did it cut and dry. And when the officers arrest her after she just ruined the lives of multiple people, killed a woman on her wedding day because she was drunk. Three times the South Carolina legal limit. And severely injured three other people. When she gets arrested and taken back to the jail, she's screaming, oh no, why me? I'm gonna unalive myself. Why did this happen to me? This is literally what she's screaming at the police department. <sighs> Let me show you just this little news report that came in of just what the judge said when he denied her bond in the deadly DUI crash. But coming up, what I have to show you is the jailhouse call that was released where the media is calling her a total narcissist that has no regard for what she did. The woman accused in a deadly DUI accident on Folly Beach will remain in jail after a That's judge right. denied her bond this morning. Jamie Lee That's Kamarowski right. is facing several felony charges for the accident that killed a woman who had been married just hours before. News News Jordan Sayop is live in studio. And Jordan, you were inside that courtroom this morning. Very emotional for everyone involved. Brendan, two families whose lives were forever fixing her hair after murdering somebody when she was drunk behind the wheel. That's her. Girl, I'm repulsed! Repulsed! Morning. Jamie Lee Komorowski watched from jail as a prosecutor recapped what happened on Folly Beach April 28th, 2023. Komorowski is accused of driving drunk that night and hitting a newlywed couple and two others riding on a low-speed vehicle. The groom, Eric Hutchinson, was badly injured and the bride, Samantha yep. Miller, did not survive. We're never going to get a popular gift. 
Miller's family fought through tears as they asked Judge Michael Nettles to consider denying Komorowski bond Tuesday morning, three months after she was initially denied. Deny it. Sadness, anger, and pain felt That's throughout the mom. Charleston County courtroom. I spoke at the first bond hearing. Hours. It's really devastating how just destroyed the family is. When you think about this emotionally, there is just such this rise. I think I've talked about this before. Happiness is when you're just in a good state of mind and everything is good. Joy is when, you know, you're really soaking in the energy of everyone around you and you are also happy and just everything is good. It's like a rising level of happiness that is also affected by your external surroundings. So can you imagine the amount of joy at a wedding, especially for your little sister or your daughter getting married. And moments, moments after the wedding concluded, the worst possible thing that could ever happen happened. Unfucking real, dude. I can't imagine how blindsided they were. And it's just as hard to stand here today, only three months later. After Miller's family spoke, it was the defense's turn. She's never even been disciplined at her college at Coastal Carolina. This is uh, Jamie's she attorney. As clean of a record as you can imagine as it pertains to reported danger to the community. Komorowski's family also stood before the judge vowing to help her with her sobriety if released from jail. The defendant cried as her family addressed the court. I will take full responsibility and commit myself and dedicate myself if you go out drinking and you don't have the money for an Uber, don't drink, okay? Get a ride home. And look, I also know people that live restaurant life, y'all go having a few drinks after work Friday night, you get cut early, you have one, two, three drinks, you need to call an Uber. Leave your car at your job and come get it the next day, okay? Like back in the day, people ain't have Uber. Now you got Ubers, you got taxis, you got friends. There's no excuse. You can't be doing this. <laughs> We've all made all the rules put upon her. Komorowski was denied bond at this time. Girl. Samantha Miller may have died in her wedding dress, but her family remembers her for so much more. She was a bride for three hours or four hours, however the amount was, but That's she has mom. 34 years of who Sam was. And Sam was an awesome, free spirit beautiful person inside and that's what I want people to talk about. Now, this is where it gets a little crazy. Like I said, I have only seen about 15 seconds of this video and those 15 seconds were enough for me. It was enough that I said, this is what's happening today. What I'm about to show you is a video that comes from Court TV. It's about 26 minutes long and it seems like there's a lot of commentary from uh, Vinnie Politan as well as some of the other attorneys that regularly go on Court TV. But the main part of this video is the jailhouse phone call that Jamie makes and it has a lot of information as to how she feels about her crime and it is shocking. <laughs> While Eric and Sam were preparing for their wedding day, court documents say Jamie Komorowski set off on a day of bar hopping. Bar she hopping! began here at El Gallo Bar and Grill. Bar then hopping! Then made her way to Folly Beach, making stops at three other establishments, consuming beer, tequila shots, and other shots of liquor. By the end of the night, police were- So she was just driving all around town. She was just hopping around. <laughs> When police arrived on the scene, one officer says he could smell the odor of alcohol coming from Jamie, and when asked on a scale of one to 10, with one being completely sober, she stated she was at an eight. Oh my the officer God. also claimed he helped Jamie stand on her feet because she was very unsteady. She made the conscious decision to get in her vehicle way over the legal limit. Oh my and God. And she killed my sister. As Sam and Eric left their wedding reception on a golf cart driven by his brother-in-law and nephew, Komorowski was reaching speeds of 65 miles per hour, blowing past the 25 mile per hour speed limit postings, and the result would be a catastrophic collision. Eric Hutchinson spoke about the tragedy with ABC News. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. Um, that night going from an all-time high to an all-time low. Oof. It's pretty rough to try to comprehend. I remember waking up oh just kind of foggy, out of sorts, and I could see my mom's face, and you could just tell something was wrong. And 
Komarovsky's defense is seeking to release their client on bail and enter her into rehab. Sometimes a severe punishment for the criminal is the first step to letting us get any type of closure. For the amount of lives that she ruined, she needs a severe punishment. And, you know, an extra 10 years, it's not going to fix it all for the Hutchinsons. But personally, I would be even more devastated if she came out with three, four, five years versus 15 or 25. That's part of what they have to factor in. She caused a lot of damage. Claiming in the motion she, quote, struggled with alcohol dependence, depression, and anxiety. Reports claim in jailhouse calls, Komorowski says she feels like a terrible person and her life is over but also wants to issue an apology, and the crash was a freak accident. What? Komorowski is charged with vehicular homicide that's, and that's three the counts risk of felony DUI. That's you take when you DUI. drink and you get behind In the Aaron's wheel. In Aaron's interview with ABC News, he addressed Komorowski. She just, uh, she's still an amazing human being that should not have been taken. Dude, I feel so bad for him. I mean, this story, incredibly, incredibly tragic. Um, she's been denied bond, so she's not getting out. In the piece, we mentioned these jailhouse calls. Well, we have those calls <gasps> now. Oh. So let's begin. I'm going to play a call for you. This, again, is the woman accused of drunk driving and, and killing uh, Samantha Miller. This is her with her father. How are you? How are you? I'm good. Okay. You guys know when someone asks how you're doing and your default answer is just, I'm all right, I'm okay, and you're like, really not? This has to be the pinnacle of that. There's no fucking way that you just killed somebody, put somebody in a coma, ruined the lives of dozens of people, and now you're behind bars talking to your dad through a Zoom call and you're good. There's absolutely no way. This is fine. Yeah, it's just a CJ's birthday. Did she just complain because it was somebody's birthday? We might have to ask the editor to give us some extra captions in this in post. Oh, I spoke with the lawyer today. I know. Oh. They seem really good. Who? They seem really good. They are really good. I think this is an odd conversation, but at the same time, I, I like want to like actually think about it for a minute. How would I react if my child did something horrible like this and now I'm talking to them on the phone? Are we trying to keep their spirits up? I think it feels uncomfortable because, you know, the dad's very minimizing. It feels like he's very much catering to 100% supporting her. Whereas I feel like if, you know, many of us were in this situation, we would probably want to support our child, but there would be an air of reality to the situation, to the severity of the situation. Like not a call talking about birthdays. This, this feels a little odd. Because bad things happen to good oh, people. Oh, that's the line. I still just don't know why this had to happen to me. Because bad things happen to good people, honey. The bad thing that happened to a good person was the woman, Samantha, who passed away because of her. She's not the good person that a bad thing happened to. You're going to, you know, uh, experience stuff that you never thought of. And when it's all over and done with, it's and everything over. is finished, you're going to be a better person. Then what if they send me away for a really long time? They will, bitch. Sorry. Well, we're trying to avoid that, aren't we? Did she has to serve time. Even if this was my child, you must serve time for what you have done. Sure, we'll, we'll get you some attorneys. We'll try to do something. You must be punished for killing somebody. In what world are we letting somebody take the life of someone else due to the decisions that they made and, the, and it just goes unchecked? You know what they said about your attorneys, right? What? <laughs> They said the family must be mafia to hire them to keep it. Mafia? <laughs> this is what I like you guys so bad. <laughs> so do I, Jamie. Mm, Y'all see that look on Vinny's face, huh? Me too, Vinny. Me too. I don't know about you guys, but one thing that's really irritating about this video is, I don't know how to describe it, but you can tell when somebody is crying for themselves rather than crying for the people that they've hurt. Maybe you guys can put better into words what that looks like, but 
I can see both of them very, very instantly. And to me, Jamie's crying for herself. Some of those lines, you know, get your blood boiling, right? Why did this have to happen to me? And you know what else too? She could have just said, why did this have to happen? That statement is wildly different than why did this have to happen to me? You have a, a particular like strand of thought to add that last part in. No, 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 no. Turn that over, turn that around. Turn it around. Um, here she is now with her boyfriend. <gasps> boyfriend call? The deputy sheriff, like whatever, like the head person of Charleston County. I mm -hmm. met with her today and she's like trying to help me out. No, she's not. You just That's met. That's good. And she like is like, you don't need to, like, I don't want you in here. Like you should be with your family. Like. Blah, blah, blah. No, you shouldn't. So that's like really good. That is good. She talking about it like the, the ending of a job interview was good. And also look at this little smile. <laughs> Bro, I can't tell if her boyfriend is dumb or he's scared of her, but he's for real looking at her on this call right now like, uh, yeah, for sure. So then I can hopefully be home sooner. She's the head deputy, whatever. You're going to jail, you sure. dumbass. Things are looking up. The entitlement that you have to have to be plotting on your release days after you kill someone is wild to me. And so she like related to the story and like she like was just like really relating to me and she just seemed really like sincere and like she really wants to help. And like, so I'm really happy. And, um, she also is the one that got my mom and dad able to like visit me like in person. So obviously that little part <laughs> makes the sheriff look not great, not right? Because he's been, you know, released publicly, locally as well. Yeah. So here's a Ooh. statement from the... In a small town in South Carolina, footage got out where the deputy was trying to help the girl that hurt all of these people. Mm, 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 mm. You know, that's spreading around real quick. And also the victim's families, oh, they definitely heard that and they got involved. Sheriff Graziano, oh, Sheriff Graziano. is in the agency's detention centers often and is also not unusual for her to visit jail residents. Oh my God, they Amorowski disowned her. is not an exception, and the sheriff <laughs> met with her one time and had brief in-person contact with her a second time to introduce her to CCSO Mental Health Director William Malcolm, whose responsibility involves visiting detention center residents to ensure various needs are met. The they straight up just said with that statement, we don't know this bitch. It was protocol. Yes, we let this young woman see her parents. Thank you. Lunch today was- A pickle and a piece of bread. It was two slices of white bread, an uncooked piece of bologna, like this big, mm -hmm. uncooked piece of bologna, and then like, cabbage and two cookies girl she thinks it's funny talking about what the food is but when she's eating it for 15 years and it ain't gonna be funny after that she's gonna be in jail talking about them i'm vegan and i need special meals but now it's funny <laughs> lunch today was i just got my snack pack in the mail today so i have doritos and um cookies there's these cookies are so addicting i already ate like 20 of them today so the cookies that they give you for dessert, sometimes you get cookies and sometimes you get cake. These cookies that they give you at this jail, I'm gonna start buying them when I come home. I'm not getting them. Oh my gosh. Guys, one in the chat if you think he's dumb, two in the chat if you think he's scared of her. I, and listen, you can be a one or you can be a two. I'm a three, I think he's both. I never heard of anyone saying, oh, the good thing about being in jail is the cookies and the soap. You know, Vinny, I gotta agree with Brandy. One of the most disappointing things now being on the defense side is when you hear the prosecutor say, oh, I have several jail calls of your client on their phone that I'm seeking to put in that Bernarda. evidence. So you know that the prosecutors listen to phone calls. I listened to hundreds and thousands of hours of phone calls when I was a prosecutor, Ooh. hoping to get that one jet. So Ooh. even if these conversations don't come into evidence as being relevant, you know where it may come into evidence? It's at the time of sentencing where the prosecutors yep. want to argue, Your Honor, even while she is in custody, still she exercises no remorse 
for her action. That's right. Go off, Bernarda. That is exactly what's gonna get her. Look, I gotta say, I told you guys beforehand, I hadn't seen the clips before. I had only seen a little tiny bit of it, and personally, I thought that the calls were gonna be exponentially worse, but on a scale of one to 10, it was still a 10 to me. She had absolutely no remorse for what she had done and every tear that she shed on that phone call was for herself. But I gotta say, if the media is calling this one a narcissist, they have not seen a narcissist with their full toolkit yet. But I do think Jamie has it in her. I'm curious if more is gonna come out or what we're gonna see in the courtroom. And dude, I swear to God, like if we don't get at least 15 years off of this. That one is absolutely crazy to me. I'm gonna be watching this case pretty closely um, because I just, I just think that there's no excuse for it now. I just think that there's no excuse. <sighs>